A couple of words. It's now almost three years ago since the European Commission published its communication on the first ever successful European Water Citizens Initiative in March uh, 2014. Once again, thank you for all of your support, but I think it's maybe good to remember a couple of points of what we demanded in the ECI. Our first demand, and a number of people, and Stefan just uh, also mentioned it, our first demand was that the European Commission should implement the right to water and sanitation as laid down in the United Nations Resolution of 2010 in EU legislation. That has not happened. We have seen that that is not a demand just of the ECI organizers, if you want, of EPSU or of the trade unions. That has been a demand which has been supported by two million, almost two million people in the European Union. For those of you who are of maybe a religious bent, um, even Pope Franciscus, in his encyclique Laudato Si, uh, has supported the right to water, has condemned the privatization of water services. We have seen why it's needed that there is a right to water. I mean, you gave a lot of examples earlier, uh, but since 2008, with the financial and economic crisis, with the social crisis, we have seen that many people in Europe get cut off of water. Our Spanish colleagues could report uh, on that uh, in particular. We've also seen that the financial and economic crisis has led to the privatization and sell off uh, of assets. So our demands our joint demand remains very relevant. The second demand uh, was that we didn't want the water supply and management of water resources to be subject to internal market rules. You remember the debate around the concessions directive, actually a big success uh, of all of us. And we said we want water to be excluded of liberalization. That is also the discussion about trade agreements, which we heard about earlier, and Dave will talk uh, about that uh, in a moment. Again, our citizens' demand and our demands remain very relevant here. A third point, and I spend a little bit of time uh, in a moment on that, we ask that the EU increases its efforts to achieve universal access to water and sanitation, and also in its development policy, support public, public partnerships, the cooperation between companies in the European, public companies in the European Union and public companies in the rest uh, of the world. Uh, and I come back to that because that particular demand is under threat despite the promises of the Commission. I think what has been very inspiring, and I think the panel before us uh, was very illuminating, also the response from uh, some of you in the room, I think the European Citizen Initiative continues to be very inspiring to many, uh, to many of us, is inspiring uh, in the sense that we also inspire ourselves, unions, environmental organizations, social movements, water activists. We still learn and uh, support uh, each other. And I think, and again the panel before us showed, again the discussions in Athens or in Thessaloniki has shown, when we ask the people what do you think should be done with your water resources? The people answer almost unanimously, think of Thessaloniki, think of Italy, water should remain in public hands. And so we are very much in touch with Europe's citizens uh, in this. One of the things uh, we have said is that the Commission's proposals uh, in its communication uh, lacked ambition because it didn't uh, address the right to water in legislation. The Commission communication at the time was a list of initiatives the Commission was going to do. Many of the initiatives were already on the table, were already foreseen. And again, the drinking water directive, the revision of the drinking water directive is on the table, is in the Commission's work program for 2017, and the Commission Sometimes I don't know if one should be polite or not. Um, I think the English would say quite cheekily. I, I think the English word is quite cheekily says that the Commission 
revision of the drinking water directive and how it wants to deal with benchmarks and indicators is a response to the European Citizen Initiative right to water. I want to make very clear here that we don't consider that a response to the European Citizens Initiative. I think, Maria, you addressed this and why uh, this is uh, quite uh, dangerous. So we do not uh, agree with that. We do agree with the European Parliament. The European Parliament, in its response to the European Citizen Initiative, Lynn's uh, report, supported by a majority of this House, uh, quite clearly made the point that one of the things we want to see is legislation on the right to water. Also, the European Economic and Social Committee, which is the group uh, which advises uh, the Parliament, uh, which advises the Parliament uh, and the European Commission, which consists of employers, trade unions and various interests, consumers and other organizations, has made very clear that that is what they expect to happen. So there is and continues to be very broad support uh, for, our, uh, for our demands. And when I was preparing here, I thought I should say that the Commission is dragging its feet. But I think dragging its feet means that you, that you at some moment will do something. Uh, but despite our interventions, Commissioner Vela, the Commission services, are not moving on the key demands uh, of our initiative, which is having legislation uh, on the right to water and sanitation as defined by the United Nations in EU legislation. So that remains a key demand uh, for us. There were a number of things the Commission promised, for example, about a structured dialogue uh, with many of the stakeholders on transparency in the sector. The Commission has delivered uh, on this. I mean, there is a consultation. We are invited. Other organizations are invited. The problem, however, is for many organizations who participate uh, is that these discussions about, are sometimes about very technical standards, uh, the benchmarks and indicators, very technical standards, but there is no resources provided to help these organizations, anti-poverty campaigners, for example, to develop their expertise on these issues. So that is a bit of an empty, uh, an empty, uh, an empty shell. One of the things the Commission did say, and I said I would come back to that, is that the Commission would support uh, in its development policies efforts to provide assistance to partnerships between operators and to public-public partnerships. I think that's very good. Obviously, we were quite pleased to read that. Uh, and the Commission also said that they would advocate universal access to safe drinking water and sanitation as a priority area in its development policy. Again, we were quite pleased, as you can imagine. In November, the European Commission published its strategy paper for, consent, for a new consensus on development, uh, on development. In that paper, however, the Commission doesn't talk about public, public partnerships. The Commission talks about, forgive me the wording, uh, it's not my invention, of blending funding, uh, that is the new Euro speak, I think, blending funding from the public and the private sector. I think we all know here that that means promoting public-private partnerships uh, in, uh, in its development uh, policy. Uh, and I think this will be quite an immediate task for us when we uh, are working with colleagues in the Parliament, working with GUI, the Greens, the Social Democrats, but also with the Christian Democrats and others, that that is something we don't want to see as part of the Commission's policy when they develop uh, their development policies uh, with, uh, with other countries. And so I think that is something we will have to uh, be uh, very, uh, very strong on. What are we planning to do? What are we going to do to try to promote the European uh, Citizen Initiative to keep uh, the strength? Well, first of all, we are making the point uh, also to uh, the people uh, like Commission President Juncker uh, and others. This is about the European Citizen Initiative. This is about building confidence. I mean, when a report which is supported by such a broad majority of citizens, by the European Parliament, by the Economic and Social Committee, then I th we think it is important to listen. If you have so many challenges 
in Europe, and we know these challenges. Many of us here are maybe Eurosceptic or label you, yourself Eurosceptic. And here you have something on which you can operate, which is actually relatively easy to operate and come forward with legislation. You should do that. That is how you build confidence with Europe citizens, confidence in the European Union and the European institutions. So that is one key argument we bring forward. The second uh, point we uh, continue to do is work with many uh, colleagues here, supporting the national initiatives, uh, the, the struggle against the water privatization. In Greece is one example. We will work with uh, our trade unions, obviously with uh, other NGOs, with the European water movement, because people forget that but the European citizen initiative didn't come about because somebody here in Brussels thought, well, this is a nice idea. It was built on many, many initiatives which were taking place. It brought together many of our unions, many other organizations, which were involved in advocating the right to water, which were involved in advocating water as a public service already. And we brought in the citizen initiative many of these together, and we continue uh, to do that. I think supporting each other where possible, also at local level, uh, will be important. Later on, we will hear from Emanuela about the remunicipalization uh, trends in Europe. Several of you have already uh, addressed that. When we talk about the revision of the drinking water directive, we will continue pushing for the right to water. And if they tell us, and they will tell us, the, right, the drinking water directive is not the right place, well then tell us if it's the framework directive on water and write that down. We don't do it now, but we will do that in the, drinking, in the framework uh, water directive revision. But they're not telling us. They're only saying, well, the drinking water directive is not the right place, but they're not selling, uh, telling us that we will do it in the European water framework directive revision. So we continue pushing in the drinking water uh, directive. Uh, I already addressed that uh, the European Commission try to respond by saying that the, uh, the benchmarking indicators in the drinking water uh, directive is a response to the ECI. We say that is not uh, correct. Another thing we are reflecting on, and I think that would be interesting also for the political groups, the European Commission has recently come forward with its response to uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. They're not just for developing countries, they also have to be implemented in the EU countries. One of these goals is uh, to achieve uh, universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. In the UN, we have argued that includes also the right to water and sanitation. Well, can we use this in all these other dossiers, for example, the circular economy, uh, where water is an issue? Uh, if, you, uh, if you are consistent, I think we have to uh, do that. We will continue to work with many of you uh, also in building further networks, further networks of local companies who promote public uh, water. We have had some discussions uh, about a European network of cities to do that. We continue our battle on trade. I will not say too much because they will uh, address that. But tomorrow there is an in important vote when we talk about the CETA agreement and the position of the Environmental Committee here in the Parliament. Europe's trade unions are very clear. We don't think what is on the table uh, meets our demands for what fair and progressive trade agreements uh, should be. So we are asking the NV Committee not to support the CETA uh, deal. I've already mentioned uh, the development uh, angle uh, we will continue uh, to work on. A last word on what we continue to support, and I think also there, uh, there is so much evidence uh, on why privatization is not the correct way forward. I mean, just the discussion you had uh, before, uh, before us in the panel, there's so many arguments why privatization is not the correct way forward. And we have, been, we have had the pleasure to work with Emanuela and his institute, but also with many other researchers across the world. The evidence is there. Privatization does not deliver for citizens. And I think that is what we have to get across also uh, in, uh, in Greece, in other countries. The evidence shows 
that, first of all, public service and public ownership of water resources and water, drinking water companies, is actually the normal thing. It's not some aberration, as some people would make us believe. It's the normal thing. We see there's widespread termination of concessions and privatizations. Why is that? The arguments have been listed. Because the efficiency arguments are not there. The arguments that it lowers our price are not there. The arguments of investment in water systems are not there. You just gave another uh, example, uh, Stefan. Uh, so the Slovenian MP uh, before us made very clear uh, what is the logic of privatization, working for profit, uh, and uh, the consequences uh, of it. We see uh, the competition and cartels, the, the cartels uh, being formed uh, by water companies. We see the enormous opposition ask people and they say no to privatization. We see also when you privatize, almost invariably there is corruption and fraud involved. Almost invariably, of course not in all cases, but in many cases and often years after, suddenly it pops up that there has been fraud uh, involved. We are also saying private companies are less accountable and some people will claim that you have to privatize for your public budget, but also these fiscal gains are illusionary. So we are committed to continue working on the ECI with all of you. We uh, are very convinced that we have the arguments, that we have the evidence, and that by working together, we can actually win these struggles. I'm more optimistic maybe than Stefan. Wherever we work together at local level, we have won these privatization fights. If we haven't worked together, yes, uh, there are risks that we lose. But where we have worked together, where we have been united, we have won these fights. So I think there's lots which can inspire us uh, in that. I've said we need a combative 2017. Well, I think we can be combative, and I wish us all uh, a lot of success. Thank you, Stefan.